I'm Nick. Welcome to Get Out and Wrench. Today, we're continuing to work on our 2008 GTI. I got all the parts that I need to put this thing back together. So I'm going to do some of it tonight, and I will finish it up later on this week, and you should be seeing it running fairly soon. So, enjoy. Oh man. What? I've never seen that before. <sighs> well, isn't that just the craziest thing I've ever seen? I'm going to bring you in here to look at that. Apparently, my oil cooler has a big hole in it. I guess because they're running the wrong coolant for who knows how long and just corroded right through. This is why you don't run the wrong coolant in your car. I'm still going to take the water pump off because, you know, it's got to come off. So we'll get... And so I don't cause any more problems. I'm going to break all these bolts loose by hand instead of using an electric ratchet. But I should be able to at least get this off. I'll see if I can get the oil cooler off there and then <clears throat> I can probably get one tomorrow. The dealer probably has them in stock but I'm glad I'm doing this now and not over the weekend. <clears throat> you can see here at the top of this gasket Bring you, in. you can see at the top of this gasket on the back of the water pump, right at the top, that's broken. So that was that part I poked in the other video. Let's see if I can get a better shot of that. See it right there. So that's broken out the top. I'm going to take this oil cooler off here. Let's see if I can get a new one before the end, before the weekend. Oh man! So I don't have any contamination. That's good. There's no contamination from the coolant into the oil, but let's see. As you can see, let me get rag. All right, so there's no there's no contamination in there from the coolant getting into the oil, so that's good. But I don't think I've ever seen one that bad. That thing is clogged. Gotta find a new one of these, and then uh, yeah, we'll uh, we'll get back on this. <laughs> Welcome back to. I don't know, day three, four, whatever. It's Sunday. I got all my parts finally. Don't think I'm going to run into any more issues. So let's get this thing put back together and see if we can hear this run this morning. I'm going to start with the oil pump. So I'll pull the pan, put the new oil pump on, put the new pan on. <clears throat> then we got the new oil cooler. I'll show you that. If you remember, this is your old oil cooler. All nasty. Big hole in it. Here's your new oil cooler. Nice and brand new. No big giant holes where they're not supposed to be. So, get that put on. And we got the rest of our parts. I'm going to do an oil flush. I have this motor flush. I found it at Advance. 
says that it will flush contaminants out of your oil. So hopefully that works. And yeah, and then hopefully we should hear this thing run and then it'll run good, I, I think. So let's get to work. So I have to take the jack out from underneath the engine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the engine mount back on real quick. It only takes a minute. So I'll put the engine mount back on and then I'll do the oil pan and the oil pump. And then I'll take the motor mount back off and do set my timing and everything up. And as you can see, I already put my battery charger on the battery. And we'll see if that takes a charge. I got it on... It's got four settings. It's got snowflake, turtle, rabbit, and engine. I have it on rabbit. So we'll see if, uh, if that takes a charge. Long lanes. It's quite a bit of metal in there, but that's fine. That'll be all right. I'm not too worried about it. I'm not worried about it. I don't think I should worry about it. This is a couple of bigger chunks. I'm not even sure what that is. That's silicone. Yeah, I don't know. We might we might just be wasting a bunch of time here, but it's fine. Never seen that again. We got our new oil pump here. Tell so, this came in a bag. And it looks like this. And look how nicely that spins. Spin with one finger. All right. Our old oil pump. It tells old one because of how it looks, and that it didn't come out of a bag. All right, give it not spin that with one finger. I can barely spin it with my whole hand. So, glad I bought a new one of those. I gotta swap over my pickup. So I'll do that. Just scrape off, scrape off all those old silicone on here so that I can get a good seal on the new pan. I got my, I got my Hyper Tough scraper this is right there made in usa nice good quality steel it was only like 10 bucks and i really like this one
Now we gotta go fishing for our chain here. Give me your chain. Oh look, first try. Oh, she's a big one. Oh, oh. Ah. Try that again. Oh, she's a big one. Come on. Oh, I got her. All right. Almost got away. Move my drain pan over a little so I don't drop this. And then... All right. Another thing you want to check, I still got a dowel in the block here, and I got a dowel in the new pump. So, I'm going to get that out. Take this dowel out of the block. Yeah, there's a little dowel. It's only going to go on one way. Show that up in there. All right, one bolt. Okay. You want to make sure to hang your chain on the pump before you put it in, because I don't think you can get the chain back past the gear, and then you'll be taking it back out again. Later on, and you're like, oh man, I forgot my chain. So always make sure to put your chain on, and then you can work it up. A windage tray. Where is that? We got our windage tray. You don't want to over tighten these. Cinch them down. I think the torque specs on them is like 8 newton meters or something like that, which is really low. Alright. We got our windage tray on. And then. I got my gasket area all scraped off. I'll just get up here with a towel, wipe it down, make sure it's clean. Don't forget to bring a towel. And then, then. Okay. we'll get up here, we'll wipe this down, make sure there's no oil on it. You know, maybe use a clean rag. But this is what I got. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you want to make sure that your oil pan is flat, that your ceiling surface is flat. That's good. We've got our new oil pan ready to go. New to me oil pan, at least. It's clean inside. That has the correct drain plug in it. And we gotta put some silicone on here. So I got this Permatex Ultra Black. I like this. It's good for oil pans and such, timing covers, anything really that comes in contact with oil. <clears throat> Small block Chevys, it's good for the china walls on the front and the back of the engine. So we're going to wipe this off real quick, make sure that that's got no grease and oil on it. Make sure to go on the inside of the bolt holes, otherwise you end up with leaks. Ask me how I know.
Okay, so we're at the point of getting ready to put the balance shafts in, but first thing I want to point out First thing I want to point out is if you look in here, you can see this plastic thing. Rip that out. Take the pliers, grab it if you can. See, it's all like crumbling. You can get it out with your fingers, that's good too, but see the end's all crumbly? That's likely what clogged up our. See how the end's all crumbly? It's likely they would clogged up our balance shaft. So get that out of there. We got our new balance shafts, and I like to put a little bit of oil on the bearing side before I put them in, just, just for a little bit of good measure. And then your intake line will slide in. You gotta work it a little bit, get it in there. You gotta pick the line up the the bolt part. We got our, our persuader. We just hit it with the rubber part. All right, now that one's in. We're in. Spinning good. That's good. I don't know if you can see that in there. Where is it? There. So those two dots. Right here. And here. It's really hard to see. But those two dots. And then the dot on that one goes in between. I've got a little tab on it that's got to line up, and then we'll get our gear. We'll refine our marks right there. And I cannot see right now. You just want to make sure that your marks are lined up. Yep, so that's good. The marks are lined up on that. Put our bolt in. Torque her down to the right torque spec. And we'll move on to the exhaust balance shaft. All right, so we'll slide this guy in over here. Sorry, I'm sorry, I'm not doing a good job of getting this on film, am I? <coughs> Same thing, line your <coughs> a little bit of working it in there. It's got to get that back part lined up with that rear bearing area, and then you're good to go. Then we'll find our other bolt, which will be the other oily little bolt. So our chain is fairly straightforward. You want to line up your dots with the marks. So I'll put it on this guy first. Turn it, then we'll come over here to this one. Move that a little so that can go on. And then everything's gonna rotate a tiny bit, back a little bit, and then that'll go to that mark. Okay, and then we'll take our guides. All right, so the guides, the bolts for the guides are very specific. You know, make sure that you put the right ones in the right spot, otherwise you end up with problems. So, if you can see, this bolt and this bolt 
are very different. The big one is for the guide that the tensioner touches and the little ones are for the guides that stay stationary. You don't want to mix those up because then your guides won't, your tensioner guides won't move and you'll have a bunch of problems. Right, so we've got a tensioner here, that's going to go in from the back. And then uh, I like to get her snug but I don't tighten it down all the way until I have everything on and set and then I'll come back and crank it down good. But there's your balance shaft timing. That's all set, so that's good. We just gotta So make sure that your chain is on it all the way, like so. An important thing to remember is sometimes you can get your oil pump chain over the gear, and sometimes you can't. But I can do that, so that's good. But I gotta get my cam chain on first, so we'll do that. Okay, I'm gonna put the cam chain on now. I got the timing tool here. So <clears throat> we'll get that set up up top. <clears throat> and you wanna get your cam. You want to get your timing mark up, and then you take your other guy. Where did I put that one? Over here. This one, you do the same thing. Get your other timing mark up. So you got your goes in there, and then I marked the chain with white paint so it's easy to see the marks. And then basically, you want to get your marks there. So <clears throat> this one needs to move forward a little bit, but also I got to take this guide out of here because I got a new one. So move that forward, and then this one's got to move too, because that bottom's not right. Put that there, move this forward again. Put that like that. All right. Alright, so now that all that's in place where it's supposed to be, now comes the fun part. The even more fun part than I just said. Getting the guides in and not getting your timing all messed up.
So that guides in. <clears throat> Our chain's still in place on the bottom there, so that's good. And then we got to take our smaller bolts. Take our two smaller bolts. They're the same as the ones for the for the balance shaft, and those go in that guide. those. Now take our other guy here. There's where it gets a little tricky. Before I do that, I'm going to show you how I compress the tensioner. Okay. You want to make sure that you know, if your vice has a bunch of stuff on it from working on other projects, you want to make sure it's clean. And basically all you do is you tighten it up. The important thing to remember is you gotta get this little spring clip here, you gotta squeeze that and you'll feel the ribs go past the spring clip. Sometimes you gotta work it back and forth and get the spring clip to go up. But as you do that, there should be oil coming out of it. Because that's what gives it tension. And you just go till it's all the way down. You're about there, and then you can take your your tool. So we're not quite all the way down yet. Okay, so now we're all the way down. The tool should fit on there, and then you can release that. And as long as your vice is better than mine, come right out and you got your tool on there. So you can install this and pull that out when it's ready and you'll be good to go. Okay. So we want to slide our other guide up from the back. So there's our bolt there. And then you want to take your new top guide, wherever I lost that at. There it is. Put our new top guide in. I think it goes this way. Okay. I got to take one of these guides out and turn my cam back a little so I can get some slack on the chain. But that poses a problem sometimes because these rub on the chain, these uh, things, so you got to slide them out nicely and then allow this to go back. So that'll go back. All right, now I should, I got a little bit of slack on my chain on the bottom. I should be able to push my guide in. And 
find my bolt hole. For that one, you don't want to run it all the way down because you're going to put your bottom bolt in too. Right, and then you run them both down. You just pull your pull your tool for your tensioner, and then pop that other top top guy out, and you should be should be all set. Actually, this is going to come right out. Look at that. Set with that. We've got our timing mark there. Timing mark there. The oil pump chain does not have a timing mark. That just goes on. So it just takes a little bit of a little bit of working it on there. That on, pull our pin for that. There you go. So now we can run our other one in the rest of the way, our other tensioner. And then that's a 27. A little wobbly there. That's a 27. You just want to snug her down. I'm going to move the camera out of the way here. You just want to snug it down good. It doesn't need to be like overly tight, just enough so that that seal seals. <clears throat> I'm Nick. Welcome back to Get Out and Wrench. Today is day... I don't know. I lost track, but it's a lot of days. Way too many. Maybe we can get this thing running today. I did the oil pump yesterday, and that took a lot longer than I had anticipated. I got the timing all set up, but now I just got to do the top end stuff. I got to put the intake manifold back on, the water pump, the oil cooler and the cam bridge and upper timing cover so i'm going to do all that we'll put some oil in this thing in the motor flush and we'll see <clears throat> see if we got a good runner or not let's find out <clears throat> hmm. so as you can see this is our new cam bracket it has the screen in it. So what I like to do on all of these is I'll pop this screen out. You just put your pick through it. And then you just peel it out. Because that's a big culprit of getting clogged up and causing all kinds of problems. And once you get that screen out of there, sometimes you got to get pliers and pull it out the rest of the way. So I like to use some engine assembly lube. You just put it on the end of the cams a little. Just so that you got something there. And then you can put some in you can put some inside this as well. But you don't need a lot. Just enough and then you could spread it around with your fingers. The same thing on the cam. Just spread that around there. And then wipe your fingers off so you don't get that. <clears throat> the reason I like these gloves is because they don't have the these three fingers. And they make it easy to work on cars with. 
<clears throat> Sometimes you just need a little bit of tapping to get on there, and then you can put your bolts in. Then you want to put your <clears throat> you want to put your bolt with the washer that goes in the exhaust cam. That. I got our toolkit, but I like to run it in with a pick because it makes it easier to turn. And then you can get your toolkit. They sell these on Amazon. Make sure you open it the right way so you don't dump everything out. <clears throat> and then depending on which spool valve you have, you would need one of these three lined straight across. So it should be that one. That'll fit on there. Sometimes you gotta tap it in a little bit. But let's get it snug that up. You're good to go. <clears throat> so this kit comes with the lock pins for the tensioner. I'm not really sure what this is for. This is for your serpentine belt. This is for your oil tensioner. Not sure what those are for. And then you got your cam locks, <clears throat> and then this is the lock. This is this is supposed to go underneath the bolt on the crankshaft. I'm unsure what this is for. And these are your cam spool valve tools. So this was pretty cheap. I don't think it was more than like thirty or forty bucks. Doesn't have a part number on it, but you just search Volkswagen TSI timing tool kit and you should be able to find it. Right, so I got the timing cover here and I got <clears throat> new gasket and new bolts and a new gasket for here. So I'm going to swap those out real quick. It's really easy. You just pull it off like so. Sometimes you got to put it down on a flat surface and pull. But yeah, this gasket was shot. See, this gasket was, was shot. So we'll replace that. And we'll replace the other gasket and all the bolts. All right, so I'll show you how to do this last one. So see how the bolt has this it's got like a lip on it it's got like this collar and this nub and then this is the rubber piece so you always want to replace these and then they go in and then uh, it's gonna be hard to see but you get the bolt has to go through the gasket so that little shoulder has to sit in the gasket so that it sits nice and then that's it then you got your cover and that goes on and then just be careful tightening these bolts down you don't want to over tighten them because they could break pretty easily See that goes in and out that's what it actually actuates your camshaft so that pushes on the end of that spool valve and controls the oil flow in and out of the camshaft and then don't forget to put your dipstick in 
because that goes in before you put the motor mount on. Otherwise, you'll be fighting with it for a long, for a while. So we got our timing cover on, dipstick, all that. I'm gonna put the motor mount back on, and then I'll put our belt tensioner back in because it'll be easier to get to the bolt from up top here than it is from underneath. It's probably about the same, but I'll do it from up top because I don't feel like lying down. One thing you want to pay attention to when you put on your harmonic balancer is it's got this V here. It's got all these, and then it's got this, this one V that's wider. That's going to line up only one spot on the gear inside there. So you want to make sure of that. Another thing you want to make sure is that when you pull this bolt out, that your gear in there doesn't, doesn't move. And then this... This bolt also has the O-ring on it. You want to make sure that that's still there and in good shape, otherwise you would need to replace the bolt. Okay. And then, so that's on. And then you should be able to check, make sure it's straight. So that's all good. The new oil cooler, as you can see, it is not rotted out here. So that's good. I got a new gasket for it. I got a new gasket for it. So we'll get that in. We got our water pump on, get our intake manifold back on. We'll get some oil in this thing and see if it'll start. All right, so we got our new water pump belt and our new bolt. As you can see, it's not all chewed up. Remember, it's a reverse, thread, a reverse thread bolt. So it goes in lefty-tighty. So you got to remember that. You want to make sure to put the belt, the belt and the gear and the bolt all in there at the same time. Otherwise, you can't get the belt. And then I got a new water pump. It's an updated aftermarket version. It's all aluminum, so you don't have to worry about it cracking. And these are pretty good. Comes with a new thermostat and a new temperature sensor that I have to put in. But we'll get all that installed. So I got everything put back together here, and the oil filter on. I'm going to put the oil in it with the motor flush, and we'll see if this thing will fire up.
Um, I gotta tighten this bolt and that. So. <laughs> So what I'm going to do is I'm going to crank it over with the ignition coils un unplugged for a couple seconds just to kind of prime the system. And then we'll see if it fires up. If it fires up, I'm not going to let it run too long because I didn't put any coolant in it because just in case I got a bigger issue and I got to pull the motor out, I don't want to waste any coolant. So I just want to hear hear how the engine sounds before before I continue and fully commit on everything else. So we got our cheap our cheap 5W40. All right. And then we got this motor flush. I'm going to put the whole bottle in. So I only put four quarts of oil in. We'll put this whole bottle of motor flush in. Oh, that's red. All right, interesting. And we'll see how we'll see what that does. I'm really hoping this thing comes to life and doesn't have any issues. Um. Alright, let's see what happens. I didn't like that. Sounds like it's cranking over okay. I'm gonna put this battery charger back on it for now, just so it's got a little extra extra juice. And we'll crank it over a couple times. Make sure we get nice good oil flow. Sounds like it cranks over decent. So let's plug our coils in and see what happens. I'm going to give us like a 50% chance that I'm not going to have any issues. All right, here we go. All right, I didn't like that. <clears throat> well, it started. 
Sounds like there might be a hole in the exhaust. That's cool. Somewhere. Oh yeah. Oh. It's just missing missing a whole piece of exhaust there. That's fine. All right. Hmm. It's not good. Maybe more diagnosis? I guess, uh, yeah. Well, we tried. So, from what I can tell, motor still turns over okay. But, I don't know if you can see down there. I got... A missing, can you see that? It's in there, right there. I'm at a missing rocker arm <clears throat> on cylinder one. So that's not good. I might have to pull the cam cover off and check all that out, but that's a project for another day. I gotta see if I can get rocker arms and I gotta pull it apart before I even go and order parts, make sure that I'm not just going to be chasing my tail again. So that's it for today. Uh, I'm going to figure out what to do with this thing. Probably end up pulling the cams out and checking all that stuff out on the top end to make sure that that's good. Uh, we almost had it. It did run for a minute and didn't sound too happy. So hopefully it's just a couple broken rocker arms or something and we can get her back up and running. I'm going to put the wheel back on it and get it off the trailer for now. Just so it's out of the way. I'll push it somewhere out of my way. And we'll, we'll get back on this thing soon enough. In the meantime, I'm Nick. Get out and wrench. <laughs>